Welcome back folks to Two Bits on Puck. I'm your host, Mr. Intangibles and the night boy, Dan Masters, with my good friend, a man who's in a battle for East Anglian supremacy, and a man who predicted the rise of Leon Dreisaitl before anyone else, Will Everett Human. Will, how are you doing? Uh, very well, Dan. Very well indeed. There's no uh, there's no battle for East Anglian supremacy as I take no ownership of East Anglia. <laughs> I, um, you don't want it. I don't don't want it. Don't want it. I'm just the I'm just the king of Kent. That's all it is. Fantastic. Uh, not really a question of the week this week. More just uh, there were a few really fucking scary injuries. Scott Sabrin obviously was one of the scariest ones at the time. It was collision with David Backus left. David Backus clearly upset, which is kind of weird to see for a hockey player. I'm not sure about your feelings on that. And then of course Brian Little had a, a fucking brain bleed, which was wait Brian Little had also... a brain bleed. Yeah, got hit with a puck. He had a, he had a bleed on his brain. He's in a neurocenter right now. He's like recovering, and it's all okay. But Jesus yeah. Christ, what what happened to Brian Little? I haven't. That's the thing. I've, I haven't even seen anything about this. Yeah. So Tuesday night, Tuesday night, Brian Little got hit by a puck in the game against the. Uh, I didn't see it was against. But it was against the Devils. I've just got the video here. Oh mate, yeah, Ela's one timer from like high slot. He misses the net, little was behind the net, and he takes it in the in the head. Yeah, oh. he has to have like thirty stitches thirty stitches as well. Jesus Christ, and he's got a brain bleed. Fucking hell. Yeah, shit's dangerous out there. Shit's dangerous out there, and that's even yeah. without sharing the ice with Milan Lucic. <laughs> Which of course we will get onto later. The uh, the Scott the Scott Sabrin one was really scary because the whole arena was just I mean, deadly quiet. Very eerie that everyone was yeah. just kind of stood around waiting and you could hear a pin drop. It, that was kind of, I think that was what was made it more scary, was the mm. fact that it was just quiet and sort of nobody was, nobody dared move even. It was it was very peculiar. Well, it really, whenever anything like that happens, it's the silence that really hammers home the severity of the situation. It's like, yeah, you know, say, if, say if there's a, like if you're watching a film with friends, yeah, say you're watching a comedy and, and your mates are all laughing then you laugh even more. You like you're, There's something in your brain that goes, oh, well, that's funny, so I find it more funny than if you're on your own. You never laugh out loud to a film, really. It's the same sort of idea in that, oh, these other people are taking this very seriously, then I must. it must be very, very serious sort of thing. Interesting. I kind of, I don't know, a weird visual seeing David Backer so upset. Not because he shouldn't be, but because it's very rare that you see a hockey player kind of let out his emotion and grief like that so clearly it's it's going back a little bit now but first game of the season Roma Polak takes that that tumble into the boards ends up breaking oh, yeah. the sternum in in an interview the day after John Klingberg said it was a good thing that he didn't move like promoting the fact that you know applauding the fact that Polak didn't try and get up or anything like that which yeah in a similar vein it's weird to hear NHL players sort of uh, p- putting the safety of their teammates and opponents above any seeming code of double hardness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, that was a quick one this week, but uh, yeah, be careful out there, folks, on the ice. It's bloody dangerous. Yeah, just a touch, just a touch. All right, let's go on with the show then. Let's... everybody, it's that time of the week. It's the smooth recap. Like a messy baby that's learned to toilet train, or a man with a weak bladder who has had a urethra operation. Congratulations are in order to Sergei Bobrovsky, who kept his first clean sheet of the season. <laughs> Jared Bednar ended Tuesday night with a resounding loss and some egg on his face to boot. The Avalanche coach was caught on camera questioning why a four-minute double minor was assessed after his staff lost their second challenge of the game. Clearly, Mr Bednar isn't as up-to-date with the rulebook as he should be. As the Islanders win their tenth in a row, the SUV is now gone from Barclays. Interviewed on the way out, the automobile says even it can't stand watching hockey there. After going 0-2 on the challenge in that game, 
the Avalanche coaching staff now has more penalty minutes over the last two seasons than their own Valerie Nachushkin, with the bench bosses outscoring the Russian 6-5 in that category. Like one of those shite M. Night Shyamalan films, a case of memory loss strikes an entire city when the World Series champions Washington Nationals celebrate with the Washington Capitals. Maybe no one had the heart to tell them that St. Louis are the current champions. Evander Kane is coming to a television near you as the star of Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away after news surfaced of the Sharks winger owing $500,000 in gambling debts in Las Vegas. Can't think of anyone else in Nevada who might have use for that information. After relegating the Sharks last week, the Hunted has become the Hunter, as in a flip-flop of last season, the Ottawa Senators now find themselves rooting for Lady Luck as they own the Sharks' first round pick for this season. I look forward now to next season with the Sens' top line featuring Alexis Lafreniere and Quinton Byfield. In the DEL, former Red Wing Jakob Kindle admits to the referee that he fell of his own accord after the Zebra issued a two minute penalty to the opposition for tripping. It's that kind of soft European honesty which meant he couldn't stick it in the big leagues. When you first learn what four players and you spend 45 minutes trying to please your partner instead of just getting on with it, echoed in the hockey world this week, as the Leafs defeat the Flyers in the 11th round of the shootout. Andre Shanton doing us all a favour, scoring the climax in goal. My, uh, my daughter has discovered Frozen, as well as many other sing-along Disney films. Please search for Will's Sweet Release on GoFundMe and donate for my trip to Switzerland. And that was your smooth recap. Alright, I'm devastated because that Evander Kane story was was added like a secret one I had for you later on. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Terribly sorry. Mate, how, how amazing is that? Half a mil. Jesus. He's been out with Eugene too much, clearly. <laughs> clearly. Half a million dollars in gambling debts. And I, I would say, how how do you get that much and how do you just walk away? But like, of course you do. Like, if you're that rich, it's like, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, of course you do, yeah. Who gives a shit? They said he, the statement says he took out eight credits between twenty thousand and a hundred thousand dollars, which was between games three and four of the uh, the first round last season. Wait, he did all that between games, five hundred grand yeah. between games, yeah. mate. Oh, that's <sighs> that's quality. That's so good. Five hundred grand in in basically twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh. so if he, if he owes 500 grand that's not necessarily that like he lost 500 grand he might have well, like, invested 500 grand sort of thing he might have invested yeah, like, a true. mill and only lost 500 grand of it sort of thing yeah good you know point I mean. good point one of three things happened and i hope it's the last one that i'm going to mention Either firstly, he realised he'd lost that much money and went, oh shit, I'm just going to leave. Secondly, they said to him, sir, can you pay? And he went, no. So they said, can you please leave? We'll be in touch for the money. Or thirdly, his mates had to drag him out of there, kicking and screaming, because he kept saying, no, no, I'll win on the next one. I'll win on the next one, I'm sure. Still got the crap dice in his hand. <laughs> Some heavy, like, pries it out of his fingers as he's being dragged across the threshold. And just, yeah, thrown out into the street. <laughs> and stay out. Yeah. And, then, oh. and then, this is, like, 11 in the morning of game four, <laughs> and he just walks across the street to T-Mobile <laughs> Arena. <laughs> uh. hey, morning, where, Vander. Oh, where, morning, where boss. Where have you been? Where, <laughs> Why are you wearing a suit? It's all roughed up. Oh, never mind. <laughs> You're early for morning skate. I uh, just wanted to get a couple of reps in on the bike. <laughs> you know me, coach. I'm a company man. Ah, oh, what a guy. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> Listen, we've got a couple of rookies here today, Evander, and you're such, just setting such a good example for them. We'd like you to uh, take a couple of minutes of your time to talk to them about being a professional. I mean, pretty went to Kevin the bank and said, can you owe me some money? Kev was like, you're taking the piss, mate. <laughs> 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 oh my god fantastic dude where is ryan reeves somebody find me ryan reeves i need to know that he knows his story because I'm, I'm, god almighty 
Mate, I've got to, I've got to know. I've not seen anything from it, and I assume it would have been all over my timeline if he'd said something by now, but I can only assume he hasn't, because I've not seen a single thing. Well, surely we've just got to wait until they play each other next, haven't we? I just, you know, I just hope, I just hope he woke up that morning and sort of, like, looked at the paper or went to NHL.com or wherever he got the news and just saw that headline and just, like the Grinch, just a massive grin, like, crept across his face as he looked out and across, across the horizon, and his missus went, are you okay, honey? Oh, yes, I am fine. It, today's a good day. <laughs> we've just got to wait two weeks. Two weeks today. Oh got, yes. Um, sharks at night. It's nights at sharks. I, I never know how to read this Google thing. I think it's nights at sharks. There will be a soundbite. I think there might be a soundbite from that from that evening of a of I think, national hockey league. I think they're also yeah. I think there also maybe something uh, pre-game, post-game on the ice, like <laughs> not on the benches. <laughs> There'll be sound bites all over. <laughs> Pierre's like interviewing Ryan Reeves on one of those bench side ones before the before the game's like, Oh, how do you think you stack up against the opportunity opposition tonight, yeah, Ryan? I just want to take a minute, Pierre. <laughs> to talk about <laughs> being gambling aware. I'm open yeah. I'm o- yeah, I'm hoping he goes into like a gambling aware sort of yeah. um, statement. Like uh, be, come on folks, now be careful out there. When, you know, it's no joke. When the fun like, stops, gamb- stop. <laughs> Pierre. <laughs> I just want to get that. You know what's really bad is, what's really bad is none of our North American listeners are going to get that joke. <laughs> but just quickly, like in England, you can gamble anywhere. There's shops no. in the high street. You just go to them. It's like in the middle of soccer games at half time, you'll have adverts to promote gambling. To, you know, come and gamble on this website. It's the best. Come and gamble on this website. We give the best odds. And at the end, because they know there's a massive gambling problem in this country, a little banner comes across that says, "When the fun stops, stop." Mate, and, it's, right. it's not even just at the end now. It's like throughout the entire advert. It's like a third <laughs> of the screen is this big yellow thing saying, when, we're more worried about gambling nowadays than we are about people drinking. And that says That's so a true. fucking lot about our gambling issues. Oh my God, it's a disaster. It's so bad. You've got a lot to look forward to North America. It's going to be great for you. All right, who's winning the cup? Curtis Gabriel wins the cup today, tomorrow, forevermore, because he is the Yay. only... As he's still using rainbow tape on his stick, as promised. Arguably the only consistent on ice supporter of uh, of LGBTQ plus rights. And uh, big old Curtis Gabriel. I wasn't a big Curtis Gabriel fan until I found this out. But now I am. Now he's the best player in not in the NHL. Someone call him up. Uh, for me, winning the cup this week is the Leafs. As a, a young Leafs fan, Cade Foster had a picture posted on, I think it was on Twitter last week, and no one turned up to his birthday party. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That's sad. The Leafs then made sure to get in touch. Uh, Mitch Marner and John Tavares sent him a message, sent him a, a personal message, and the Leafs have said he's going to have a nice sort of present coming his way from the team. So, always Is, good. Do, do we do we know who he invited to his birthday party? It's not he didn't invite like John Tavares and Mitch Marner, did he? <laughs> this isn't actually like a cover up of of them bugging him right off. <laughs> no, no, no. Apparently, he invited his friends and they didn't turn up. Pricks, fucking you, pricks. If you're listening, Cade, you they're go. fucking pricks. Yeah, fuck them off, Cade. Get some new friends. You don't need them. You'll you make new fa- friends. It's you don't fine. fucking need them, mate. Do drugs no. instead. When the fun stops, stop though. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who's getting relegated? I'm, I'm, I'm going to relegate Jordan Bennington for being a sore loser. <laughs> Is that was it today's was it comment from was that the comment from today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it might have been from last night. But yeah, him saying that. Oh, last he, night. Sorry. Yeah. He he should have won the Calder ahead of Elias Pettersson. <laughs> not 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 only is John Bennington a massive racist, he's also a fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> Jesus Christ, what is wrong with you? How can, <laughs> how can he in, in his heart of hearts really think that he had a better season than Elias Pettersson did? Really? I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna really get the Leafs because <laughs> and <laughs> because may... because John Tavares and no, wait, no, didn't turn up. up. Wait. Wait, oh wait, because, and this is so cynical, I could maybe be in prison, but do we know for sure it was this boy's birthday and no one turned up? You know, it's just a picture on Twitter, I'm just saying, a few things, only a year or so ago that that mum put that picture on of that boy crying because he was being bullied, that it turns out his parents were in like the clan, and everyone was like, oh no, this boy's being bullied, it's terrible, and then afterwards we were like, oh, that's why he's being bullied. 
Okay. So well, I'm just saying. Jez, I'm just on. saying. There's a lot to unravel from what you've just said. For, Go on. Firstly, are you blaming the Leafs for a potentially snidey eight-year-old who's trying to mug to or 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 eight-year-old and associates for trying to mug no, Twitter off? Because right now, I think right, I think in this day and age, you have to be very careful to straight away jump on the, oh, that's so sad. Here's loads of stuff bandwagon. Because that boy who got bullied last year, who had the right, was crying in, on that um, Instagram video. He got invited to the Marvel, like the Avengers premiere, and I mean all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, but well, the, that, se- the second part of what you said, Dan, second part of what you said concerning this bullied child, yeah. he he's not in the clan, is he? No, but he was getting all this stuff, and then and, it turns out his his parents were like, but then, but then I'm thinking like, did the parents have the parents used this this boy? For this Leafs birthday thing to get like free tickets or something, I don't know. You just got to yeah, be careful one, these days. One hundred percent. Like they, whether, <laughs> whether whether the parents are like racist or not, that's absolutely. If you're putting it on social media, like my son's a loser, nobody came to his birthday party. You know for a fact that in this day and age, you're especially if you tag the Maple Leafs in it or whatever. Yeah, begging for a freebie, and that kid's not like. He's not leading the charge on beg on on exploiting himself. <laughs> same with same with the clan kid. Like yeah, he he's as much of a victim as anyone else is. Is he? Are you just saying? All right, all right. Even if this kid, even if his clan kid is is in the clan, <laughs> and he gets all doled up in his best sheet and you know goes around the Grand Dragon's house or whatever, that's not his fault. No, he's not like forming his own opinions on on race. He's being radicalised from within. Fair point, but still, can, can I, I just, just like just thro- just throwing I, stuff online. Can like, I just say you know, we're throwing... fifteen minutes into the podcast and somehow we're talking about <laughs> radicalised eight year olds? Like, <laughs> for fuck's sake! <laughs> it's this family's fault. It's not my fault. They put their kid on Twitter. And you know what? As well, <laughs> like, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. Are you saying that you didn't radicalise this eight year old? <laughs> No, I'm just saying it's not my fault for bringing this people's attention and having this having this cynical opinion. Because <laughs> okay. here's the other thing: is all right. If my my daughter's having a sleep, it's my daughter's birthday next weekend, and so this weekend she's having a sleepover, right? If nobody turned up to a sleepover, I'm not going to put it all over social fucking media. This is, this is what I'm keep saying. Keep it as quiet as possible. So it's not they, the kids' fault. Don't. It's not the kids' fault. It's not the Leafs' fault. What What are the Leafs going to do? If the Leafs get tagged in that thing and then they say, "Nah, allow it. We're not going to do anything." Then they get bombarded with like, oh, what do you do? You hate the troops? Do you hate this kid? Um, <laughs> do you hate the troops? Because his dad. <laughs> oh, do you hate the troops? That was hilarious. <laughs> I just so, think the team should be more careful before they start throwing stuff out, you know. And oh my god, yeah, like oh, you're gonna get loads of presents from us and all that kind of thing. Like you gotta be careful these days. You never know. Right, you never know. <laughs> let's let's check back in next week when it turns out this kid's dad is Tikajinsky. <laughs> I will have my revenge. Christ, we need to move on. The show's already off the rails. How many starters you got and scratches? Uh, I've got one starter and two scratches. I have got three and one. So I'll do my. Uh, I'll do two of my starters first. Then three. You're being too generous with your starters, mate. Like, like there aren't three good things that happened this week. Maybe not in your world. No, in your Mr. world either. Well, that's true, but I have to I have to balance out my cynicism with some lightheartedness. Work. So, so, so this is this is um, starting things not in good faith with, with no semblance of like backing <laughs> behind them or sincerity. <laughs> you no, know, these are these are all these are all sincere. Well, two of them are. <clears throat> One's just a personal opinion, but whatever. I'll I'll, I'll judge <clears throat> these myself. Uh, I'm going to start gritty. Who met his super fan this week? <laughs> oh wait, which was. No, this was a this was a beautiful. This is one of those. Okay, like get your tissues ready if you're a parent because this is one of those. Oh God, okay. Uh, uh, Jack Callahan, a four year old boy who is uh, battling cancer, has yeah, he's living in a care home at the moment. Okay. And he's not been able to see any of his friends or anybody from his, like from his world apart from the people at the care home for the past like five months. And he just said like, I just want, for my birthday, I want Gritty to come and see me. And he had he'd like handmade his own gritty dolls and all this kind of thing. So then the show the 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 stories on the SPM go and find it. It's amazing. But in the end, it's just gritty being gritty, being stupid and silly, and this little boy's laughing. And there you go. Every week there's a, a story that brings a tear to my eye, and this was it this week. Excellent, absolutely excellent. Big up gritty. That's Big a, up gritty. That spurred me to add a second starter 
last minute right in addition and i'm, oh, also, on, gonna, I'm also gonna start uh, a gritty related thing i'm gonna start kyle bukowskis of sportsnet oh. <laughs> <laughs> for, have you seen this um i have seen this for his his wonderful <laughs> wonderful wonderful rinkside hit it was uh it was leafs um leafs flyers in philadelphia and uh, he's getting harassed by Gritty while he's trying to do this little ringside hit. And he somehow manages to insert puns about what Gritty's doing to him while he does the um, while he does the hit. And power, power to you, Kyle, for, uh, for a man who was mugged off by Brad Marchand last season. Yes. Um, he's absolutely recovered. The, I will pause for the cynical side of me that thinks these puns were a little bit, a little bit too good. And I can't imagine... That uh, Gritty would have been allowed to to do all the things he did to Karpikaskis while he was live on television, without you know sort of running that by Sportsnet, you know previously. But we'll we'll have it. I, in good yeah, faith. I think you're right. But but we'll still, have, but still, yeah, it was good. Great bit of television. Love it. Big up Karpikaskis. Uh, I'm also going to start. Uh, bizarrely, as a Bruins fan, I started the Leafs. I'm not going to start the Montreal Canadiens mm. after they applauded Zdeno Chara. For skating in his 1500th game, which was bizarre, very bizarre. In, we've got an interview coming up in the next over the next few weeks with a, a fan, a Habs fan, because as Will and I said ages ago, we wanted to get fans on the show to talk about their team, talk about like the market they're in, what it's like, where they live, and all that kind of thing. So I thought, what better than to have a Habs fan on as me, a Bruins fan? And he said, we did the interview last night, and it'll come out in a few weeks, but he said it was very surprising because I said, like, do the Canadians hate the Bruins more or the Leafs more? Because I heard, I kind of heard over the last few weeks, like, oh my God, a Toronto-Montreal series would be the absolute best thing. It'd be so good. And I was thinking, all right, like maybe because the Bruins rivalries died down because neither team has been very good together for a long time, that maybe now they don't care. And he said, oh no, he said, hatred of the Bruins still. It's massive hatred. And he was, he said he was very surprised that they applauded um, Chara, but fair play to them. Yeah, power, power where power's due, isn't it? Yeah, I think, do you know what? I think it showed that they appreciate the game of hockey more than they hate the Bruins. I think it shows what a hockey market that is. Because for them to, their arch rival, a guy who's like lifted, you know, lifted up a cup and proclaimed to be everything about Boston, or let's, you know, for them to applaud him is a pretty big deal. And it kind of reminded me, of, do you remember Ronaldinho got applauded at the Bernabeu playing against Real Madrid for Barca? Yeah, when he just you eviscerated them. Didn't they win like yeah, 4 he, like, nil he or just something? just ripped them to, yeah, he scored two unbelievable solo goals. And after his second goal, all the Madrid fans were just stood up applauding him, which was insane. Like, that's insane to see. And that kind of the same thing last night. You know, it shows that they love they love their sport more than they hate certain players. Okay, what's your second starter? <laughs> uh, my second starter is extremely serious. It gave me half a second to compose myself. No probs. Uh, I just want to send out thoughts to Mark Letestu on, uh, on behalf of the podcast. I'm sure on behalf of yourself as well. Dan, have you heard about what happened to Mark Letestu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Mark Letestu has been shut down for six months with myocarditis, which is allegedly a virus which attacks the heart. So, you know, he's he's doing well at the moment. His his prognosis is is looking good, but still, it's a very serious situation for a, in some ways, a legend at the moment. Like you know, Mark Letestu, absolute journeyman sort of thing. He's he's done very well to stick around in the league for for as long as he has. Um, well respected throughout the league by by players and fans alike. So yeah, just thought that to Mark Letestu and his family in this in this trying time. Fantastic. Okay, and uh, and my last starter is this is a personal one, but I'm going to start classic consoles. As Ooh. this week, I went out and bought a PlayStation Two. Oh, man. oh, that's a little bit sad to think that um the PS Two is a classic console now. Mate, it is. It's the, it's the greatest the greatest game system ever created. And with it, I bought a copy of Pro Evolution Soccer 5, the greatest soccer game ever created. Of course and I'm not sure... No, <clears throat> well, no, no, no we're going we're gonna to stop you there, because the greatest football game that was ever created was This Is Football 2005. And I oh, won't hear anything sense. otherwise. I'm not sure what your first console was, but oh, you wouldn't appreciate the absolute losing of collective shits that occurred when the PlayStation 2 was released. It was fucking insane. Yeah, I, I, I was I was too young to really get it. Like I knew it was really yeah. good, but not like be that buzzed about it. What was your first console actually, or gaming system? What was the first thing you got? <sighs> the first one I remember play having at home was yes, it was either the Sega Master System Two, 
or the Mega Drive. I know we had them in conjunction. I can't remember if we got them both at the same time from him. Oh, okay. But yeah, the Mega Drive is probably the, the short answer there. Yeah, so this is the crazy thing about the PlayStation 2. It's, it's, a great, it's, the, it's the biggest selling one ever. It sold 155 million units. That's mental. And man. they only stopped making them about three years after the PlayStation 3 was released. Because they were still selling. They kept making them because they were still selling. They, they were they, still releasing FIFA on PS2 in like 2009, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And it was so... So it was released in 2000. It was so successful, Sony only stopped offering repairs on them last year. That's crazy, isn't it? Which is insane. And I was just in I was just in a game shop and it was it was like 30 quid for the you know the console and the game and I just thought you know what, I had so much fun on this. I need to get one of these machines. So I grabbed one and I've been having an absolute whale of a time on it. So, tiny bit indulgent. I'm going to give you my top five gaming consoles or gaming systems ever, as voted for by me. Number five, Mega Drive stroke Sega Genesis, which is what it was called in uh, the US. Terrible name. Number four, yeah. Number four is the PS4. I love my PS4. I, I think it's amazing. Number three is the Game Boy. I think I've said this before, but... My grandparents bought a Game Boy. I mean, when they were well into their 60s because they became obsessed with Tetris. I became, everyone became obsessed with Tetris, didn't they? It's, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's I the, was a kid, but yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's the, it was the classic story of, oh, actually, you don't need a game with a story and all this. You know, you just need something that's crazily addictive. And everything since then has been, well, it's just like Tetris. You know, all those kinds of games, is, you know, it's just been like that. Uh, number two is the Amiga 1200. I very much doubt you'll ever see one of those, Will. Uh, no, I'd no, I'm not in the flesh. No. So the Amiga 1200 was a company that was, I think, it was bought by a, a that was used to be the Commodore Games System, mm-hmm. which was around when I was God, like five or six. That's how old they were. Commodore and the 1200 64. had the, you know, the three and a half inch blue floppy discs with oh, the, yeah. like the metal. Yeah, you could get that's where you could get the games. But if you had a certain disc, you could copy any game for free. Which is why they, which is why they sold a fuck ton of Amiga twelve hundreds because you could essentially get it and get free games for the rest of your life because it was so that was you know it was amazing but there was some absolute classics and that was the first time I ever the Amiga twelve hundred was the first time I ever played on Championship Manager and that was that bore my love of that so I have to include it just for that and obviously then number one yeah the PS two just just a phenomenal piece of kit just groundbreaking oh. so you said that you had you had one scratch. Uh, yeah, I've got one scratch. No, two scratches. Two scratches. Two scratches. Okay, you go first then. Uh, the first scratch I'm going to scratch is going to be the Canucks three-on-three lines, as they're clearly not doing the job properly. <laughs> and uh, maybe a taking three-on-three a little bit to the extreme. That was so fantastic. Shay. Oh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. I still don't quite... <laughs> like they... it, it must have been that St. Louis just caught them, like, everybody... Not necessarily flat-footed, but you can't turn around. You're going forward too much. So did you not see what happened then just before that happened? Because what happened was two... Can- I don't know who was on the ice, but a Canucks player tried to turn, slid over, and took out another Canucks player. No. Yes. Oh, yes. So if you, see, if, you find, if you can find the longer gif, that's what happened. And obviously then the one guy was like, well, fuck this, I'm not skating back. <laughs> so... <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. Isn't that just beautiful? It was so weird. It's it's such a it's such a it's, such, it's like finding Bigfoot. It's such a rare sight. That like, that's no way. I'd, I I would say that's what three on three is designed for. You know. Yeah, totally. that's like the ultimate three on three moment that we've been waiting for all these years. <laughs> uh, my only scratch is the University of Alberta and its students this week. To be fair, not the university itself, but the students, as uh, Canadian wrestler Lance Storm who I once had a very nice conversation with, oh, posted a letter on posted a letter on Twitter that there are reports of problems around campus with blockages of drains. So the campus obviously sent down Dynarod, or whoever the Canadian equivalent is, to look what the issue was. They found it was coming from the male shower area. Well, if you can see where I'm going with this. And it turns out that massive amounts of semen had mixed with hair oh, clogging up the drains. I'm going to say, I'm just going to say five words to you, Will, and this is what nearly made me gag. Can you imagine the smell? <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, I yeah. can. Horrific. That's, uh, yeah, that's... That's, that's despicable. That's horrific. 
Just burn it to the ground, folks. I'm sorry, just build a new one. Build a new one, like, two miles away. And, you know, because the stench of that is, oh, my God, awful. An, an academic institution, the future of, of our, you know... Uh, of the planet, in, really. Yeah, of, of intelligent society. And they're wanking so much that they break the planet. <laughs> For fuck's sakes. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Oh, my God. Uh, my last scratch is going to be uh, the brand of Versace, Dan, as we discussed all of half an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, this is a very old news story that has only just come to my attention as Dan and I were slagging off the Canucks' current third jersey. If anyone's not heard about this, it's from, from 2017. Uh, Versace, the popular Italian fashion brand released a black sweater or jumper with a relatively familiar logo to some to some hockey fans on it if you want to have a, have a google of it to get get your eyes on it yourself they've basically ripped off the canucks skate logo for their black red and yellow jerseys where it's angled a bit harder and instead of canucks it says versace unsurprisingly that's about it as far as the difference goes also, the fact that it's retailing for one and a half grand rather than two hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, Jesus! It's so. If it's not a rip off, it's the weirdest coincidence I've ever seen in my life, and quite frankly, it is blatantly a rip off. Like it's, it's just mental. Cool. Wasn't Versace the one who got shot? Wasn't it Versace who got shot at his front door by like an ex lover or something? Wasn't that him? Yeah, sure. You don't know, do you? No. No, unsurprisingly, no. I thought it wasn't wasn't Versace. Who's who's Donatella Versace then? That's his daughter. Yeah, that's his daughter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, on the steps of his Miami beach house. Oh he shit! Was shot, he was shot dead. What by the, ma- uh, by the mafia? Door. No, it was an ex an ex lover. Who was in the mafia? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, Andrew Andrew Kuhnanen was his name. The guy who killed him. They did a show about it. I was on, it was on um like an HBO kind of show, like a hey, was, like a dramatization of it. Versace gay. Canals. Every day's a school day for you, isn't it? God, don't don't say it like that. Don't say for me. The traditional saying is every day's a school day. You know, encompassing everybody. Dan. I think to be fair, I've just realised like, you all... were probably. How old are you when he died? Two. I'd... Three. When did he die? When did he die? <laughs> what year did he die? Ninety-seven. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was uh, I was five, Dan. So forgive me for not being up on current events in the fashion world when I was five. Wearing elasticated umbro tracky bottoms every day. Well, maybe if you had a been will, you wouldn't look so stupid now, would you? Think about that. I, I wouldn't look so stupid back then as well. If I take a fair point, <laughs> wearing your cap of tracky pants. Do, do, well, just before we <coughs> just before we move on to the main portion of the show, I do want to fit in something that didn't. Uh, you know, it's not a start or a scratch. It's more a message to pass on from a fan. Dan. Oh. Okay. A friend of the show, Joe friend of the show shout out to joe shout out to joe shout out to joe he said uh we were having a little chat and he said p.s let dan know i completely agree with him a la sydney crosby Ooh, there you go and I've he's, got ho- one. he's yes. hoping for a five to ten minute segment where uh where he can in, in the future where he can offload his uh his opinions such as wow dan you are so insightful I mean, if you want to do that, Will, I, I think I'd be okay I, with that. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, if he's going to pump my tyres, I can't, you know, I don't really want to upset the fans. We do this for the fans, really, don't we, Will? You know, I don't want to upset them. Uh, we do, and, and, and all due respect to Joe, um, no. This isn't a, this isn't a fucking <laughs> quick fit. We're not here to pump tyres. <laughs> when he said that, he hadn't, just, he hadn't just taken a puck to the helmet, Addy, or something. Like, I mean, he might well have. He might well have. You've, you've seen him, he looks like he has, doesn't he? No. Fair, fair, absolute star of that wedding, that boy. It Listen was that. a star. Do you know what it was? Yeah, I can't, you know, I, I can't insult our super fans. Well, it, it's not good. It's not good for branding. It's not good for business. It's not good for business, is it? Two super fans. <laughs> oh God! All right, let's get on with this. Uh, before we get to our guest and the news, we are on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and available in all good record shops. If you can <laughs> give us five stars on I'm, iTunes, I'm, that's really I'm good for us. Please. <laughs> you give us five stars on iTunes that helps us a lot so please go and do that thank you very much okay this week's guest is 
somebody you should all know very well, and I'm sure you all follow on Twitter. It's at NHL History Girl, or Jen, as we can now call her, because we're friends. She doesn't just enjoy history, she is history. And this was a legitimately fascinating chat. Uh, here's the thing, like, I'm not sure if she thought we were just being silly or something, but I, I couldn't, I, I, was, I was genuinely fascinated, intrigued by everything she was telling us. The, the thing with this quote-unquote interview, Dan, is like, I was really worried leading up to it. I was like, oh, Jen really knows her stuff. I've got to do some prep. I've got to find some things to ask her. And then we start recording, and it was just story time with Jen. It was perfect. It was absolutely oh, perfect. fabulous. She absolutely went off. Even with, you know, this is teasing for next episode, right at the end of the interview, where she just mentions Tony Hand, very off-cuff, and it's like, well, for God's sakes, Jen... Now you have to come back next week. I know, yeah. it was amazing. It oh, was amazing. Yeah, She's an really... absolute font of knowledge. An absolute font of knowledge. And super interesting. She talks about the race issues in Quebec, uh, the Richard riot, that she's not going to tell the NHL party line. You know, she knows the truth and she'll put out the truth, not what the NHL want you to believe is the truth. But yeah, it was absolutely amazing. So uh, yeah, here she is, Jen. Hello. Jen, Jen hi. Jen, hello, how are you doing? I have a little bit of a head cold, so I'm sorry if I sound a little rough at times. Oh, crikey, don't apologise for that. Sorry for dragging you out of, I assume, the sofa with a nice blanket and a bit of Netflix. Actually, I am watching a classic movie channel, and um, <laughs> Cary Grant is on, so I'm I'm good. <laughs> a fantastic choice, yeah. You, you found, found a nice little bit of reprieve, like, right, I'll get away from the telly for a minute before, I don't yeah. know, God with the Wind comes on or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, I think if I was feeling ill, Cary Grant would cheer me up as well, actually. <laughs> His movies always have the best dialogue. It's so true. It's so true. Hey, Scott. Hey. I'm just about to uh, record with these lovely British guys. Yeah. So I'm just letting you know. Oh, okay. Okay. That's very, very premature to use the L word to describe us, Jen. <laughs> yeah, two we're, I think we're barely two minutes into a Skype conversation. That is putting a lot of investment into this conversation already. <laughs> there's two guys in chicago that I've, I've done their podcast before and i've gone on to talk about like you know hockey movies or whatever and i've gotten to the point now where i just refer to them as my two best a-holes <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a hell of a title to have someone's <laughs> best arsehole <laughs> which sounds a lot worse when i say it with my accent <laughs> To derail this conversation before we even begin, sorry, Dad, I'm just, I'm just going to crack on if that's all right with you. Yeah, of course, of course. Quebecois, however you pronounce it, do you forgive me, swear words. Yes. The fact that you differentiated between those and traditional French mm. swear words would indicate that you have an idea of the differences. Do you, Could you give us a, a crash course in, oh, in, uh, in the differences? So, histor- well, first you have to have a little history lesson and i'm sorry but that's just how it is how um, how dare i was not expecting any history in this conversation whatsoever <laughs> jen you are disappointing me already yeah you're like oh god she knows all of this really does she have a life the answer is no um <laughs> it is wikipedia with the twitter account and that's what we love you for oh thanks quebec traditionally is a intensely catholic province from the beginning intensely catholic and they've gotten away from that, but the way to rebel in, in Quebec for the longest time was to rebel against the church mm-hmm. because they were the authority, the daily authority. They were, you know, they were part of the government. It was it was just the authority. So in Quebec, to swear is to use church-related words or religion, uh, religious item words. So you can say calice, which is a chalice, like the, the one they use for communion. Okay. That, that's what and a very, very common thing to say in Quebec is uh, "je me calice," which means "I don't give a shit." So, um, so literally translated, would that be uh, "I don't respect the chalice" or something like that? Yeah, like, like I don't, I don't care about the chalice. I don't have the chalice. It's "je me, je me calice." Yeah. And if you watch the movie "Bon Cop, Bad Cop," which has a hockey theme to it, and I love the movie. It's it's one probably my favorite hockey related movie, but there's a, a certain scene and you can look it up on cop bad cop um, swearing, and it's a quick little lesson on how to swear in Quebecois and how you can use thing uh, the word calice in like five six different ways as as a verb as a noun as a proper noun as a <laughs> the, the ultimate utility swear word. 
yeah yeah that's that's what Calice is in in um in in Quebec and then there you can say tabernacle which just means ah oh, shit or ah oh, fuck you know like mm. it's just that, that thing so like you stub your toe and you you go ah tabernacle you, you know you know it's just that thing you say to express frustration and and anger you know in, so in the way, we way, would say oh shit you know yeah you use it for any any situation however you want to it just pops into your mind automatically of ah this is the appropriate thing to say in a negative situation yep exactly i, I love how Quebecois swear words are, are rooted in religious items, not just like taking God's name in vain or anything like that, but specifically the items of the church and the sort of almost um, disrespecting the institution itself more than the religion, if that makes any sense. I think that's so almost yeah, a that's... great way of swearing. Yeah, no, that's it exactly. They're, they're pushing back against the institution of the religion, not necessarily the beliefs, the religion itself. Which is... um. A, a big thing to say about religion at large, which I think would probably take another entire podcast to discuss that. Yes, it would. There's there's so much. Quebecois history is it's rather intense in some ways, mm. the way religion and politics really just control life. And then you get into the later years and then you get the separatist movements and you get the terrorists. And then, uh, believe it or not, there were Quebecois uh, terrorists they were separatists and they were terrorists, but anyway, and then um, there's, there's a period and it, it's better now, but it's still not gone. But there is a, a period where the Canadians hockey team was also intensely political, especially with the rocket um, being part of the team. Uh, oh, really? Be, yes. Um, because you had English speaking Canada and you had French speaking Canada and there was a lot of discrimination in in Quebec uh, of the French uh, speaking population by the English speaking population who were generally considered to be like more more like the landlord class the like the upper crust sort of class Um, once once the English came in there was there was very distinct differences between the two and Quite typically, you had English-speaking run companies controlling things and English-speaking just sort of coming in and, and running over and, and um, taking over and discriminating. And so I actually talked to the Rocket's little brother once, and I said, you know, there are a lot of these slurs. They would call you a frog. They would call you a, a Pepsi. And, and that's that's another cultural thing, cultural, socioeconomic, th- economic thing. And he said, you know, you just, you, you learn to just not, it can't affect you. You just can't let it affect you. And then there was with the Richard riot, that was a very political thing as well, because mm. Clarence Campbell was this sort of English speaking autocrat. And he, he was seen as discriminating against the Canadians, against the the French speaking players. Um, and, and, it was true to a point that he he was, but that's that's a large part of what the Richard riot was um, was about was not only pushing back against what they saw as unfair treatment of their their star player, um, the Rocket, but it was also a pushback against the sort of resentment that they had uh, against the English speaking companies that were running things and you know Clarence Campbell and and just this this sort of perception that they were constantly being held down and and so you know there's a lot of very political aspects to it i I tweeted about the other day that i think it was thursday that a lawyer had filed a complaint against saku koivu because he wasn't quote serving the uh, french-speaking population of of uh, quebec because they do have a commission there and uh, that makes sure that you know french French speaking now has a priority. The French language now has a priority over English in signage mm-hmm. and not. So his argument was that because Saka Koivu spoke English but not French, this meant that he was not fit to be. I don't know quite what he was trying to say, but he was trying to argue that that because he didn't speak French, he shouldn't be the face of the Habs franchise, or he shouldn't be. You know, it was it. It's just it sort of reached these really ridiculous um, proportions in the 2000s with, with Saku Koivu arguably being the most respected 
you know, Hab's captain of the modern era, really, isn't he? Yeah, no, absolutely. Everybody loves him. I've never, ever, ever heard a single bad word about him, not one. And he's almost universally beloved. I, I'm, and so to argue that he's not serving the, the French population simply because he doesn't speak French, it, you can see where these politics have sort of ended, like, like glommed on at the end. Uh, and that was, that's been the big one uh, with, the, with the Habs constantly for the longest time you would hear well this captain doesn't speak french and and this coach doesn't doesn't want to learn french and you know we the french reporters are not being served we the french uh, speaking population are not being served properly you know i mean it's just it, this is sort of where it ended up is these very particular language wars i guess and it's a lot of people like to well, outside of Quebec like to harp on and 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 almost mock the Canadians for for wanting you know, like you say a French speaking coach and you know all your star players have to speak French and serve the French media sort of thing but but really it's it's in some ways a last bastion against years and years of oppression from from the English speaking population coming in. It absolutely is, and you know it's it's gotten better, but it's, within the city itself, it's. Um, it's very tense and I can understand why players don't particularly want to go to Montreal because they're in a fishbowl, um, a very small fishbowl, a very bright fishbowl. There's intense pressure from the fans and the reporters. There's the tension with whether or not you should learn French or whether or not you're expected to learn French. It's, it's this constant go round that they have to deal with. Do you think, um, from a hockey standpoint at least, if there was another, if there was another franchise still still alive in Quebec, be it, I mean, the Wanderers are the one who sprung to mind. That's quite a few years ago now. But you know, to to have more of a a, a, a franchise representing the French speaking population, a franchise representing the English speaking population, do you think that would change the dynamic of hockey in the province? No. No, it's. I'd, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the only other city in, in Quebec that could really hold a franchise would be Quebec City, which is even more... Quebec City is a much higher French-speaking population. Mm -hmm. And the players who used to play there would actually talk about how they came into Quebec City, and it's this lovely place, but they're very isolated because everything is French first, because they didn't speak French. It was a very difficult experience for them. And I think that might change a little bit now. People might be a little bit more open and accepting and perhaps more prepared because I know um, there are many players now that have gone to schools that were teaching them French from a young age. So they're, they're better prepared if they were to play in Montreal or Quebec City. But I think it would just end up sort of being a battle of Quebec again. If, if that makes sense, because you have two teams in the province and, and um, you know, it, it can get very, you know, this is our team. No, this is our team. You know, I, I, I don't see it being easing any tensions necessarily between French and English speaking, but there would be a definite rivalry there, which would be good for business. <laughs> well, in theory, if, uh, even if uh, Mr. Bettman doesn't seem to think so. <laughs> He's very determinedly anti-Quebec City. I, I don't know why. So I'm more interesting than this, I swear. Oh, don't let's let's not pat each other on the back too much. But that is thoroughly interesting, Jen. Don't don't you worry about that. There are several books that cover. Uh, two of them are in French, unfortunately. So if you don't speak French, I God. don't think you'll be able to access them. But there are some uh, scholarly works on hockey in Quebec and the English-French uh, politics. So if anybody wants the list, you know, you, you know where to find me on Twitter and I can get it to you. I'll, have to, I'll get, my, uh, get my Google Translate out and try and thumb my way through one of them. <laughs> so going back, Jen, then, you obviously have a, a very varied and extensive knowledge of hockey history. Where did that love of hockey history or even history come from? Did you study it at college? Uh... Well, I was a graduate student in the English department, and I liked teaching, but 
it turns out I'm not a huge theory of being told how to interpret books, like how to think about books. So if I am reading a book, I don't want to be told, oh, this is obviously an allegory for colonialism. Like, you know, yes, yes, sometimes it is and that's fine. But I I just didn't like, I guess I didn't like being told how to think in in that manner. It just made me really uncomfortable and I was miserable. And I started writing about old hockey stories for fun just because I found it fascinating like the thing that sucked me in first were the um, the old newsreels and the old photographs of these ridiculously thin pads that they would wear and the sweaters that are like half unraveled and I'm pretty certain there are cigarette burns on a couple of them <laughs> <laughs> you know just just the um the the photographs really uh sort of struck me first and then I started researching just out of sheer curiosity, because that's the sort of person I am. I was five years old and I asked for a set of encyclopedias so I could read them. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of person I am. And so I started writing way back when Bleacher Report was actually a fan blogging site and not this weird slideshow site that it is now. Not not just BuzzFeed for sports. (laughs) Yeah, basically. And so back then it, it was all like community done. You could log in and write a story and it was just this very supportive uh blogging community and people said this is great you should write more and I said oh well okay sure so it's what I did for stress relief which tells you again what kind of nerd I am then I switched over to the history department uh and I was actually working on a thesis about the 1972 summit series between the Canadian NHL players and the Soviet professional. They claim they weren't professional, but they were professional. Um, they, were, and, they were soldiers, Jen. You can't be professional if you're in the <laughs> army. That's not. That's very right? unfair to the to the Red <laughs> Army. But they were. Uh, that was my thesis, and it, well, it had to deal more with um, the ideas of of history and uh, not history, but, uh, politics and patriotism surrounding the series. And it just sort of took off from there. A friend of mine who runs a website, Greatest Hockey, it's Greatest Hockey something. Anyway, uh, his name is Joe uh, Peltier, and he just wrote a book about the Canucks. I I was uh, pointing out an error that he had made in one of his player profiles. And we got to talking and, and um, he read some of my stuff. And he's like, you're good at this. You should keep doing this. So again... <laughs> I got on Twitter and and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I slowly figured it out. And here I am today. It's it's funny how doing something almost out of, almost out of boredom or for for stress relief, what you say, and then somebody saying, oh, you're actually quite good at this, can just spur you on into an entire new chapter of life that, you know, it almost defines your online persona sort of thing. Oh, yeah, it absolutely does. Um, It's kind of wild because... I will go to the the draft and I will just be walking down the street to the arena and all of a sudden people will peel out of a crowd and be like, NHL history girl, I love your work. <laughs> okay. Hi. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, can't move around there for people jumping out of crowds and shouting, we love your work. It's uh, happened all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really weird when I'm queuing at Tesco and someone just shouts at me, I love NHL history girl Jen's work. It's just yeah. very odd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never get used to it. Never. I just, I'm always shocked that people love what I do that much that they, they search me out to, to say so. Well, there's, there's a, a, a this is definitely going to devolve into just a compliment set fest, but <laughs> there are, there are so few people out there accurately and interestingly chron- like, you know, chronicling or, or exposing, if you will, the, the history of this league, which is undoubtedly a very interesting league throughout, you know, from, from start to present day. It's, it's been just as crazy as it is nowadays, but add in, you know, some, some old time smoking in airplanes sort of magic to it as well. So it's, of course, people are going to be interested, Jen, and especially when you portray it in such a, you know, when you pass it over in such an interesting way, <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, the thing I pride myself on is that 
I am not going to tow the NHL party line mm-hmm. um, when it comes to history. So I loathe using the term original six. I'll call them the surviving six. Oh. But I hate calling them the original six because they aren't they aren't original. Uh, it's it's a false term. It's a marketing term, and it has messed up the the perception of the league's history to the point where people have no idea that there were actually two Ottawa Senators franchises, or that St. Louis had a franchise before uh, the Blues. We we need to respect the St. Louis Eagles. We really do. <laughs> we do, because they're they're a part of the the league. They're part of the league's history, and I think it's unfair to sort of black out these sections of history that aren't useful to your marketing plan i feel as well that you see this all the time is that we've spoken before that the nhl is the almost the 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 giant corporation behind ice hockey nobody thinks about any of the other leagues around the world or even other leagues like the ahl or anything else like college leagues anything like that everyone just knows the nhl and that's it and they do attempt to rewrite history with that do you feel that with your desire to to not tow the company line, we could almost call you Hockey's Indiana Jones. Would would that be a fair? <laughs> um, would that be a fair comparison? Maybe <laughs> there are a couple other people who probably deserve that a little more than I do. Um, but I just go around unearthing the stories that I find interesting and passing them along, warts and all. I don't really edit the stories when I tell them. I I don't you know change them to make you know Brett Hull look better. Or, or something, whoever. I, that was just the first name that came to mind. Um, I can think of another hull that might be a, an even better representation <laughs> of what's in NHL history. I have discovered that when I do tell stories about Bobby Hull, people do react strongly, and and some unpleasantly. And and so I've I've sort of curtailed any any Bobby Hull stories, just for the simple fact that I could tell the story. And it is interesting, but also there's an amount of abuse that I will get in return, and sometimes that's just not worth it to me. It's uh, it's the joy of living in the second coming of the Nazis. You can't <laughs> then talk about a Nazi without having having aggression coming from all causes of the internet, so I can't, I can't blame you for that one there, Jen. Well, and that's, you know, I feel that that's sort of a, an ethical tightrope that I'm walking sometimes is because... There's a story I want to tell, but the player involved in the story is someone people react to very negatively. And so sometimes, honestly, it's better for me and my health not to tell that story. Is it a story that needs to be told? Probably not. But also, I don't want to simply erase players from history just because they weren't great people. They still existed. They still did these things. We need to acknowledge, you know, these things that they did. But at the same time, we can acknowledge, yes, that the, they were a terrible person. But, at, you know, again, do we need to acknowledge both at the same time all the time? I don't know the answer to that. I think it's the same like Michael Jackson or somebody like that who has another side. And you have to then separate the work from the person. Right. And sometimes it's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. So on that subject, especially of you, know, you say about players who weren't who were great players, but not necessarily great people. It's it's something we still see reflected in today's game. How do you think, and how how do you personally, as a fan, to react to to situations like the Austin Matthews situations, people like Patrick Kane in the league? How obviously Slava Voinov is a is a horrendous and very extreme example of it. But how are you happy with how hockey fans at large react to like the Patrick Kane and Austin Matthews situations? Um, I'm very pleased by the the vocal segment who are saying this isn't right and this isn't okay and we don't want to accept this. Um, so I'm I'm very proud to see that because even 10 years ago, I don't you think you would have seen that nearly as strongly or as vocally as you as you have in the recent years. Okay. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that ship sort of turning around because for the longest time. The NHL was just, you know, it's just boys being boys. And that was the line. Oh, it's just, you know, they had a little too much to drink. There's no big deal, you know. And and so as a female fan, to me, that's huge. There are a couple of players that are supporting their sisters who are pursuing their own hockey careers. And not only are they supporting them vocally, they're supporting them financially. 
so that they can afford to pursue playing in the uh, NWHL or the CWHL as it was. So, you know, that's really exciting to see too, because we are now at this crossroad where these players are actively supporting women's hockey. And you wouldn't have seen that as much in the past. So I'm really thrilled to see that as well. I, I'm very frustrated with the uh, with the Nashville Predators because they they do things uh, they do events that are you know domestic violence awareness which is great but then they've signed two players who have domestic violence issues you know I and and, and fail and so to I'm, properly uh, reprimand players on their own roster let alone it being a historical thing you know when it happens in front of their face they fail to to correctly address that which is they, they, just, they they don't des- they either don't address it at, at all or they put out a statement that is so I don't even know how to describe it but so blandly I, I I don't even I really just don't have the words for it but they they put out these statements that just make me angry because it's so like blase PR just nothing to see here folks you know yeah I'm I'm very disappointed in uh, in Nashville and you know now I'm very disappointed in in the Leafs I mean yeah. yeah he might be your star player but he's still screwed up and you can and should do something about it that's my always my issue is uh, is I've said this before it's teammates who don't just say I'm annoyed with him I get it he's my teammate and I'm sure we'll move past this but right now he needs to prove to me that he's better than this and they never say that <laughs> they just say oh well you know we're gonna get him support and we know he's made a mistake but he'll bounce back I was like, why is he bouncing back? I don't understand. Why are you supporting him? Yeah, that drives me insane. I I think the next step, and this is going to be huge when and if it does happen, but hockey is an intensely, uh, it's almost brainwashing you when you play, that the team is more important, that supporting your teammates is more important, that there's no I, there's only we. You Mm -hmm. know, like this whole sort of cult of of team i guess i'll call it logo on the front not the name on the back sort of thing yeah exactly and and it's a, a very it's a very dangerous mentality because you can see it players who are trying to get back into games with injuries that they have no business being in a game with that's that's a big one that's a big part of it but the next step will be players publicly calling out their teammate as you said you know he's my teammate and we're gonna get past this but right now you know he needs to apologize for what he did you know something just that simple is going to be huge and it's going to be the next the next breakthrough that yes this is a team and there is a we there's also an i and what i do affects someone else and you know make it more about responsibility to your teammates in in a personal sense rather than this cultish we sense that well, makes sense yeah absolutely absolutely and, and and just to round off the matthews thing because far too much airtime has been dedicated to it already but the, dan and i have said before the thing that's you know outside of obviously the, the the situation itself that's really disappointing is that this young player who's a new face of the league you know ushering in the new generation of talent is someone who's perpetrated such a such a heinous act and it almost quashes any hope you had that we were moving past it as a as a sort of community in hockey that you've got a, a young 21 year old franchise center who's still doing the same old age old bullshit that you know generations past have done yeah and you know it's not i i really cringe when when people say well he's my my kid's idol you know how do we deal with this well you're a parent you've dealt with other awkward situations with your child, you can do it again, you know? So it's not, I mean, yes, he's an adult and yes, he can do what he wants. But that being said, you know, you are a public figure and you are influencing younger lives. You know, you got to keep that in mind too. We haven't, uh, really. yeah, we haven't spoken since that interview, have we? No. Come on, mate, like... <laughs> That was that was crazy, wasn't it? I Just... genuinely, I genuinely thought, oh my god, we need to get her on for like a ten part mini series or something. <laughs> Do you like... Mate, seriously, all jokes aside, I want to get her on 
whenever we do and just talk about Tony Hand because I feel like she knows so much about Tony Hand and like she knows everything like she genuinely she, knows she, everything she does it's like, that's mental and I love how straight away it's just off topic like damn Quebec race issues like quality let's I know. do it. It was, it's it's honestly everything I want. Do you know what? I'll leave, I'll leave part of this bit in the show. But like, when when we DM people for interviews and things, we do say to them, okay, we'll send you over some topics, but you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I, I genuinely don't care. And, and she I, did I, not I sometimes put in. Fuck. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And I'll say like, if you want to come on and talk about hockey, great. If you want to come on and talk about dinosaurs, great. I don't give a shit. I just want to get hockey people on and just talk to them, like find out what they like, what they do, you know, what makes them tick and. Oh god, like this was perfect. She was it's... absolutely perfect. We've been very lucky so far, really, haven't we? Of course, we really have. We've had some like everyone's been amazing. Every single guest has been thoroughly interesting. Yeah, and all in di- all in different ways. For a yeah, friend of the lucky. show, Paul Campbell, getting a shout out on Thirty One Thoughts this week. See, we're uh, talking to there's like people. Paul's an A-lister, obviously. Yeah, nothing but A-listers. Let's go on to the news. Let's start with let's start with Lucic because that was the biggest thing I think this week. Well, sure. He's able to hang on, and Scherer gets run over by Lucic after taking a jab at David Riddick, who made the save, and Lucic comes in and bowls over the 22-year-old. So he gets suspended for two games for roughing Cole Sherwood. I think roughing is the polite way to put it. Do you want to start on this one, Mel? For all the um, uh, boneheads out there <laughs> yep. who think this is acceptable, fuck off. I've... I've I'm gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked at the amount of people that are out there defending Milan Lucic. Like, I'm, dude, I'm, this I'm, is, yep. I'm rewatching it again now. Like, what? Go Cole, off, King. Go off, King. Mate, Cole Cole Sherwood goes goes to the net. He goes to the net. I thought that was what we were meant to do. He goes to the net. He follows the puck. He doesn't. Yeah, you know, he plays to the whistle, and then straight away, Lucic is falling over trying to punch him in the face. And it's like Jesus. Fucking Christ! These people out here on Twitter who are saying, "Oh, it was only uh, you know, it was a, he had his gloves on." Like Sherwood was lucky. Oh, I wasn't that bad. Like you're a fucking idiot. What is wrong with you? If you if you're pro hockey fights, fair play to you. Whatever. At least there's an element of consent in a hockey fight. We can't be out here promoting people who are trying their hardest, having a midlife crisis, hanging on to their relevancy in the league because they've forgotten how to score fucking goals, like Milan Lucic, out here attacking rookies because they're trying to score goals, like, and because they, they've stripped them of the puck five seconds beforehand, like, it's moronic, it's disgusting, two games is not enough, Milan Lucic needs to fuck off, get the hell out of there. Okay then, so my points are... <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. <coughs> yeah. I'll get a train ticket and I'll come and beat you up myself. <laughs> no, do you know what? I 100% agree with you. I absolutely agree. I could not. Here's the thing, right? So I missed what happened. I watched Tim and Sid talk about it first. And they, as they were talking, I was only kind of half paying attention. So I, I think I missed the clip where it showed him what he did. Because I, 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 I think I was on my lunch or something. I was looking at something else anyway. So I was just listening to it. And then I listened, I listened to, uh, there was a, a TSN clip from um, the Overdrive show, and they were saying the same thing as Tim and Sid. Oh, well, we're quite surprised, and oh, I'd have given him, like, four minutes for, you know, I'd have given him four minutes, or blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, all right, like, he couldn't have done, you know, couldn't have been. And they were talking about Cole Shaw, you know, Cole Shaw was digging at the puck, you know, while, while the keeper's got it. And I was thinking, like, God, is he, like, swinging at the keeper, or, <laughs> you know, what's going on? Or at Rick's eyes. Like, yeah, like, get off! So I've got, so what, so Sherwood has a shot. Riddick saves it. It looks like it's not iced. So Sherwood has one jab. One jab at the puck. That's it. And then here comes Lucic. And just, I mean, for fuck's sake, did we not learn anything? It was only, what, fucking five months ago that fucking, was it Logan Couture in uh, the, the Vegas game that hit his head on the ice? No, Joe Pavelski. Joe Pavelski, sorry. He goes down, hits his, like, he hits his head on the ice, and there's fucking blood everywhere. Watch Cole Sherwood after he takes this punch that he's not prepared for. I don't want to fucking hear that he should have been prepared for it. You can't be prepared for a punch if the guy doesn't take his gloves off. That's the fucking rule about this fighting, like, in in this league, is that you drop your gloves and you say to the guy, drop your fucking gloves. And if Lucic had done it then, great. I don't like it. I wouldn't have liked it. But at least he gives him a fighting chance. 
anybody can punch anybody with their gloves on and sucker punch them. This is that's what riled me more than anything else was the 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 fucking like. Oh well, I mean, what did you expect? What are we doing? What are we doing this week especially? This week especially, Scott Sabrin goes down and people think shit. This guy might be dead or paralyzed. Brian Little's got fucking bleeding on his brain. This game does not need people doing sucker punches for some bullshit retaliation. I'm not sure people realise this, but the ice is quite hard. And if you like if you're on skates, it's not that easy to kind of keep your balance when somebody like sucker punches you in the face. You might fall over and smack your head on the on the floor. It's like concrete. I, I don't know if people realise that or not, but we do hundred percent. This drove me absolutely insane. Insane. And he should have got more than two games. And they only and they said they only gave him two games because he's done this before. Well, back to this play safety bullshit thing again. Nate Schmidt has a, a stake that's been tainted from some fucking farm somewhere and he gets 20 games. Lucic punches a guy who then hits his head on the ice, a rookie for fuck's sake, and he gets two games. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather have 18 Kuznetsovs, you know, coked out of their skulls, skating around there than 18 Lucic's. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And these, you know, these players who like... They just feel like their contribution now because they can't play anymore is to hurt people. And, and that's, that's what you did. That's the thing. It's, it's, it's the Luchichs of the world, especially Luchich himself. He you know, stapled to Conor McDavid for the last few seasons and he couldn't produce. And it's such a... It reeks of desperation. It reeks of a player who the game has passed him by and the only way that he sees himself to be effective is by attacking teenagers and young adults who are just trying to score goals the whole like you said the whole thing of like old Cole Sherwood should have uh, should have protected himself if you watch the run of play for that Sherwood takes a shot he follows the shot to the net he tries to get the puck out once one time he digs at Rick's club and that's that and then he's coming back around the behind the net and you can see it's the whistle's gone end of the shift I haven't, I haven't scored. My shot hasn't been good enough. It's that exhale of, all right, I'm back to the bench. I can, I can relax a bit now. And then Lucic comes around and just assaults him. I'm not saying that there shouldn't have been a scrum. If it had just been a scrum and then maybe Lucic had tried to, you know, jab at him a bit, try and rile him up or get under his skin or whatever it is, that's one thing. But to just outright attack the player with no preparation, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting and it has outed what is unfortunately a relatively vocal majority of uh, of the game and it's it's not even it's not even just fans. Like you say, it's you know, this is hockey culture at its purest. It's right, you've tried to play the game so you're gonna get punched in the face because you're a twat. What were we even fucking doing here? Oh, it's insane. I it was insane. I was so surprised. I was so surprised by the amount of people who came out and kind of put their support in. I fucking don't get it. I don't get it. The next time you're with one, the next time you're with one of your mates, just walk up to him and slap him in the face, and see how well he does defending himself. Because that's how that's the, that's what Cole Sherwood had to deal with. He had no idea that Lucic was going to do that because he was just skating towards him. If Lucic had gone over to him, and said like and got on his face and grabbed his collar and said, "You do that again, and I'll fucking kill you." Fine, I don't mind that. I don't mind players kind of like trying to menace each other and make a point to this kid. Because I imagine this kid would have shit his pants <laughs> because it's Lucic. That's, yeah, that's, that's all he had to do. That's, that's, that's all he had to reasonable do. to an extent, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's crazy, but again, it's the rule of sport and sport is crazy. So we have to kind of go, okay, well, that's fine, I guess. It's what happens in the sport. But like, it, it's a sucker punch. Nobody said he sucker punched him. The consequences could have been super bad, super bad. And nobody seemed to notice or care. Fucking weird. It's, it's a sucker punch combined with the fact that he's like, skating into him and falling over himself just in salivating at the opportunity to punch a 22 year old if you if you massively disagree with me and will please 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 get in touch i won't like call you out on the show i won't name any names slide into the dms sure our emails on the account somewhere or something but our dms on for this show at two bits on puck are open you can you know talk to us whenever you want on there if you disagree with us get in touch Tell me, tell me why. Tell me why we're wrong. Because I would love to know. Because because we're in the minority here. Me and Will are in the minority, and I do not understand at all why. 
DM us or, or whatever you want to if you want to have a proper discussion about it and if you've got a sound argument as to why you think that's okay to do on a sporting field. But Yeah, yeah, this isn't to get into an argument either yeah. or a shouting match. I just want to know why you think it's okay. I'm not gonna shut you down or anything, just I just want oh. to hear the opinion of why. Anything else on that? Uh no, no, my, my, my doctor said I've got to stop talking about me and Alu <laughs> If I, If I want to see my, my daughter go to university, then I need to stop thinking about me and Alu There was a, an interesting, uh, as we get into the new age of players talking and not being afraid to talk to the media about certain things, Taylor Hall had some interesting comments this week as the uh, when the Devils lost 7-6 to Tampa in overtime. And he said it. We're, bat- we're battling our own fans at this point. We're one for throwing a power play and we're getting booed. It's a tie game and we're getting booed. That's a tough environment to play in sometimes, especially when you're at home. I know when we're playing somewhere and their fans start booing, it's a funny environment for the away team to play in. I understand the fans' frustration. After the game, if you boo because we lost, that's fine. But when you're one for three on the power play and they're booing, it's tough. If you're playing at home, you want to feed off the energy of the crowd and not let that affect you. But sometimes it does. Will, how much do you think being booed by your own fans affects a player's mentality? It's it's funny how, like, player to player, you, you get the whole, oh, I don't really hear the crowd during the, during the game. Please stop booing me. <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm asking you nicely, please stop booing me. <laughs> I mean, so, so, so the Devils fans were booing because the Devils were shit on the power play. Well, they were one for three, that. They were one for three. That night, it wasn't like you know. That's that's fine. Were... <laughs> that's all right. That's better than their percentage this year, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe it was. Maybe it was like a really, really early in the season, like tanking boo. I was like, <laughs> no, stop, stop scoring goals. <laughs> They're <laughs> saying boo earns. <laughs> <laughs> boo, boo all. <laughs> I was saying boo earns. Um, <laughs> Poor Taylor Hall. I mean, if you want, if you want your star player who's on, you know, facing down the barrel of free agency to stay, my advice would be to not boo him. That's that's yes. just, you know, I'm no, I'm no expert on on like you know sports psychology. I'm not a GM or anything like that. I'm not, a, I'm not an agent. But if I was, if I was Taylor Hall, and I'm like, eh, do I want to stay in New Jersey? Do I want to? see what my options are elsewhere, and then suddenly the fans in New Jersey start booing me, probably makes your decision a bit easier, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it makes your decision a lot easier. A lot easier. At, at least a little bit easier. Because, as, as we discussed, you're now playing on a bad team as well, whereas pre-season expect... Because here's the thing, are they being booed because the Devils are victims of pre-season expectation? Uh... Well, that, that, that's that's the thing as well. Like the Devils fans have got to understand that maybe they're they're still not really that good a team. Well, clearly, yeah, clearly they're not. It's it's a weird one with booing though, isn't it? They're four, five, and four. That's not too bad, really, is it? Well, did you know? Well, that last season the St. Louis Blues. Oh no, I can't. I can't do it again. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. So, so, so it's like, so the... Christmas yet? Yeah? What are we even doing? <laughs> exactly. That's why it's to January first before we decide who's going to win the cup or not. Because the booing isn't... Look, let's, let's, let's be honest, it's not Pavel Zaka's problem that he's shit, is it? It's not his fault. <laughs> it's not Travis Sajak's fault that he's shit, is it? Like, it's, it's, it's the fact that, you know, Ray Shiro has, has built a shit team and his players are shit. You need to boo... You need to wait around Ray Shiro's car in the car park... And then boo him, and then go. I don't know. Go all children and men on him, and start like flipping his car and shit. <laughs> I love the idea that he's walking back to his car. There's like an angry mob, and he's like, "Oh shit!" And he just stopped booing. That's all he does. Nothing else. He just boo. Fuck you, Ray. Boo. The reasonable thing for the Devils fans to do would to would be to slash his tires and then like beat the crap out of him, basically. Yeah, not that's boo. What not boo that's Taylor what a Hall. Would do. Yeah, yeah, that's what a normal fan would do. Stop being so nasty to Taylor Hall and threaten Ray Shiro's life. For God's sakes. <laughs> it is bizarre. It is bizarre that this guy who dragged you into the playoffs on his own, you're just like, you're booing this team while he's on the ice. And he's just going to say, yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. A guy who's already declared how much he appreciates what John Tavares did in free agency. But, he's, <laughs> so, like, maybe, maybe that's why they're booing him. Maybe they're just like... Oh, maybe they just know. Fucking it's fuck. a preemptive, but it's a pre-crime. I mean, it's a pre-crime. Uh, that's what they're doing. It, hell, it, all right, all right. 
where's Taylor Hall playing this hockey next year, Dad? No, we did this the other week. So, all right, t- today is it New Jersey or is it not? No, there's no way. Is it exactly no so? Boo him now. Why not boo him now? Do you know what? Yeah, fuck <laughs> it. Turn the corner. Boo him. <laughs> fuck him. He's leaving. Fuck him. Boo him. Absolutely. Fuck that fuck guy. Him. It's like it's like all those Islanders fans thinking, oh, I wish I'd I wish I'd spent that entire nine years of Tavares just booing him, and the devil's like, hold on, I've seen this film before. Let's let's boo him now while we can. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, you're completely right. Well done, Devils fans. You've made a, that's very clever. You've seen, you saw what happened across the street there, and you're like, hang on a minute. I know what happens after this. <laughs> Fuck you, you, you snake, you how, traitor. How dare you to start throwing? Not at the moment. I have to start throwing pajamas for all thirty other teams in the league. At him. <laughs> And sort of whittle it down as the season goes on, and it makes a bit more sense of uh, of oh where God. he's going to go. Yeah, I've turned the corner. Fuck Taylor Hall. What a traitor! What a fucking prick! Boo him! Oh, <laughs> Sla- slash his poor tires. Ray Shiro. Poor Ray Shiro. What? Like, what's he supposed to do? He can't even trust his own players. <laughs> what a what a hard up guy. He's going to walk to his car. There's going to be a mob there, and they're all going to shake his hand and say, "We support you, Ray. You're very unlucky." <laughs> And then they're going to fix his car. They're going to carry him home <laughs> like a um, <laughs> like in Dead Poets Society. <laughs> what's the what's the, I was thinking, you know the old thing where you get like a chair on sticks. Yeah, like it, like in Cleopatra back in the day, way yeah, back yeah, in yeah. the day. Yeah, like that, but with his car. Fucking shout out to Cleopatra. There's a reference. Jesus. Big up, big up, Cleopatra. I don't. Yeah, I forget. He's legit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we've turned the corner now. Yeah, they're right. He's leaving anyway, ain't he? Yeah, we said. Yeah, fuck off, I think he's going to go to Colorado. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. That was it. Just throw avalanche pajamas at him. Do you reckon they have avalanche pajamas? Probably they somewhere. There's a lot of weed there now. Maybe they could throw vape pens on the ice or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've always said wheat. Like, so what? <laughs> no. What? What are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, just throwing grams at him. <laughs> Dan's poorly, just so everybody knows. I'm gonna cut all these. Co- I'm gonna cut all this coffee out anyway. Still <laughs> You're gonna cut. <laughs> I've just randomly spouted. Oh, Dan's very ill. Oh, is he? Mm, I've I've noticed. So something else I wanted to talk about this week: Darcy Kemper in Arizona. I can't remember. Where, I can't remember where I read it, but obviously he signed a four and a half million dollar contract in the summer, which kicks in next season over two years. And I remember at the time there wasn't kind of any uproar about it, and was it kind of general consent. Well, sorry, four and a half million dollars. Yes. Jesus Christ! Which kick, it kicks in next season, so and then it's, and then it's two years. That's still mental. Well, 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 well. As if you, if you allow me to uh, elaborate here for just a second, so it was announced and it was on Twitter, and I thought, well, I, I thought the same. Like, wow, that seems fucking quite a lot. Go on Twitter, check the comments. Everyone seems to agree, oh, it's, that's not a bad deal. That's, you know, his kind of numbers are backing up. It's kind of about right. And I thought, Darcy Kemper? Like, really? Uh, very much so. He is a very good goalie. Well, this season alone, he's first in save percentage, goals against, goal saved above average, and adjusted goals allowed. Uh, in his career, 917 save percentage and at 2.45 goals against. And he's not exactly played on some very good teams. No. No, and he's this year he's saved forty seven of fifty four high danger chances, which I think is where uh, where goalies make their money. Really, you know, if you're saving the the goals that you shouldn't save, that's sort of the um, the indicator of a good goalie. Uh, another stat I found this isn't this this was the one that kind of I was like that really blew me away. With a minimum of four thousand minutes time on ice over the last two and a half seasons. Darcy Kemper has the second best goals against average in the entire league. That's crazy. Isn't that insane? Do you know who's first? Pop quiz. Who's first? I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you five guesses. So who's got the best goals against average over the past two and a half years, but they have to play to a minimum of four thousand minutes? Two and a half seasons, yeah. Well, it's not, we're not halfway through a season, it's fucking November. Um, oh, all right. Fuck's right. Sake. I was gonna say John Gibson, but no, no. Pekka Rinne. I'm also, 
I'm also trusting right now that you're not on natural stat trick checking this. I, 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 I've got a natural stat trick up, but I'm only looking at uh, Darcy Kemper and Anthony Ranta. Um, oh, fair enough. Uh, no, not Pecorino. Nine of 12 high danger saves while on the penalty kill this year. Nay bad from Darcy Kemper. The fact that you're even asking this question indicates that it's probably a keeper I'm not thinking of, so it's not going to be your, your, your Gibsons, your Renes, your Holtbys, your Tukarasks. Hang on, hang on. Are, th- are those two official guesses, Holtby and Rask? No, I'm saying I'm not guessing them. Anton okay. Hudobin. I'm going to guess a sixth one, and if my sixth one's right, I'm taking it. So <laughs> it'll go. Okay, it'll go to the judges. <laughs> shit. Uh, goalies. National Hockey League goalies. Uh, Jordan Pickford. I'm getting two in my own head. Yaroslav Halak. No. Four thousand minutes time on ice over the past two seasons and this bit. Four thousand minutes means d- d- fucking dick all to me. Like that. that They've played a lot. All right. how, how many games is it's 4, not some guy who's played like it's not some guy who's played like five games 4,000 minutes right I've got a, I should have done this maths beforehand that's 60 oh over 66 games over two and a half seasons okay alright alright all right. this is a, the guess that has to count good goalie that's not good enough to be good but it's still kind of good um, it's not Bobrovsky is it all right, so here's my, here's my sixth guess. Sixth guess. All right, is it? Would you call this goalie a starter or a backup? No clues. You've had oh, enough, you yeah. get enough guesses. Well, you've you've you took away one of my guesses. This is this is extra time. I'll I'll ask. Yeah, whatever. This is extra, I'm giving you an extra guess. Oh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll but grace, well, oh, for friend, good grace, I fucking. It's only fucking sixty four goalies in the league. How hard? It's not fucking. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! It's not Martin Jones, is it? <laughs> Whatever, Jack Campbell. It was it was Ben Bishop. Well, Ben Bishop. Oh, for fuck's sake! I was so close <laughs> with Hudobin. I was I was yeah. even trying and to think what what teams have played really boring, low scoring hockey the last couple of teams. <laughs> Couldn't see it at the end of my own bloody nose. There you go. There you go. And he's only second to Bishop because Bishop played more minutes. That's it. God, I've said this before. How many goalies are there in the league? 62? Something like that? Uh, 60, well, around, around yeah, about 62. that. You could have given me 75 guesses. And if you just said to me, like, with those parameters, I wouldn't have picked Darcy Kemper. I'd have been like, okay, he's played, like, he's not played for the past, like, year or something, like, somebody injured or something. I would not have picked him. He's a really good goalie, and he's playing really well. Yeah, but a bit easy, though. And here's the thing, like, like, shout out to Paul Campbell again, but when we were on, like, goalie stats... Like, sometimes they're on bad teams. Like, you can't blame them for some of these, like, for some bad goals. And, like, you know, so, like, look at the teams he's played on. You're not going to say any of them are really, really good defensively. No, no. But, I mean, Minnesota are kind of not good defensively, but, like, boring. 917 over his career. I mean, that surprised, that surprised me as well. I would never have thought that. Well, I remember early in my days of getting into hockey, like, he was he was an up and cover, not on the level of like yeah your Vasilevskis or your, your Gibson sort of thing. There was always a chance that that Darcy Campbell was going to be a good goalie, and and, and let's not forget Dan like yeah nine seventeen over his career is good, but he's not. I remember when Devin Dubnik was like one of the best goalies in the league, and look at him now. And you like, can prove I'll, anything with stats, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can prove anything with facts. No, but you know what I mean. Like, it's so, it's so up and down. It's so up and down. You are right, and it's, like I've said it a million times. One of those positions that's a bit odd, but yeah, yeah. definitely. Like he, it was more. He's doing very well at the moment. This, this kind of little, uh, this Darcy Kemper talk was more to point out that wow, I was wrong. He's actually, I believe, he's actually worth his four and a half million dollars for two years. That's nothing, is it? Were, were you out How there? Like... Well, it's hardly to, a commitment. This is four and a half million dollars that hasn't even kicked in. If he was earning it today, then yeah, fair play. But who's to say what's going to happen next year and the year after? He's probably he might he might be playing in the uh, in the in the Austrian in the AHL. Well, yeah. <laughs> he might play <laughs> Jordan Binning- He might be backing up Jordan Binnington next season, <laughs> as you so predict for, for the Brampton <laughs> Beast of the ECHL. <laughs> Just well, you saw Scott, <clears throat> Scott Darlin's playing in Austria now, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yes, Just he is. The the pipes are calling for Mister Billington. 
Well, Scott Darling still be on a still be on cap friendly somewhere, won't he? Oh my god, he's got to still be being paid by someone, isn't he? That's what I thought. Hurricanes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, buy out. Yeah, he's still being paid. Oh, the Panthers bought him out. The, oh yes, they did. Like yes, four they months did. ago. That's right. Yes. Yep. Still getting paid for another three years by the Panthers. Not bad. So one second, I'm just going to click on. Uh, just I always like to, you know, like you kind of think, oh, he's had to, you know, when you sometimes you look at hockey players and you think, oh, that's a shame, he's had to go over here or he's lost his job. They like playing in the NHL, like I think, yeah. So far, he's made twelve million dollars over his career. So uh, I won't be, I won't be saying crying too much over Scott Darling's lack Jesus of NHL time. Jesus fucking Christ, has he? Yeah. Oh, who was the goalie who had the tryout with um, the Leafs over the summer? He had a PTO. What? Well, uh, like, I'm not in the mood. Michael Neuverth. Michael Neuverth, yeah. Hang on. <laughs> it's our weekly. Let's look at how much these shit hockey players have made. That was it, yeah. Cause <laughs> I, remember saying, yeah I, said, I remember saying to Paul Campbell, like, over his career, Michael Neuverth made north of $16 million. <laughs> and, and that's criminal, because Michael Neuverth is infinitely better than, than Scott Tarling. <laughs> <laughs> Infinitely bad, and he and he was in the league a lot longer than he was. Yeah, totally, oh, totally, mate. That's so criminal, so criminal, mate. Scott Darling, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> ashamed of yourself. You should, you should give that money back. Give that money to Michael Neuverth. He needs it. Michael Neuverth is going to go back to the Republic and live like a goddamn king. <laughs> that's that's a little bit racist. I mean, you're implying that. Why do... Whatever, I'm not having this. What's happening right now? I'm so confused. Well, I was I was trying to call you racist for saying that... For implying that uh, the Czech Republic is a poor nation, but then I've realised that Michael Neuverth earned $16 million, so he lived like a king anywhere. Yes, that was the point. He's going to go back to where he was born and it's, live it's just, like a king. It's just the way that you said back to the Czech Republic and live like a king, which the phrasing implies that you think the Czech Republic is a poor nation. No, I'm implying that he's rich and he has lots of spare cash. Yes, I've, I've realised this now, but you just maybe need to be a bit more careful with the way that you say things. All right, let's do that again then. Oh, wow, well, I mean, Michael Loveth could go back to his place of birth and live like a king, couldn't he? <laughs> uh, how about that? No, it still sounds like he was born in like a burlap sack. All right, you say it's, it then. It's now what should I say? Michael Loveth has a, a lot of fucking money, isn't he? <laughs> You're such a dick. I hate you. <laughs> See, you don't you don't invoke any stereotypes about nations or anything. It's just stereotypes about Michael Neuverth having a lot of dosh. And what's wrong with that? Dude, he could have been born two streets away from me. I would have said he could go back to England and live like a king. <laughs> it would have been more appropriate. The point is, he lived in another country. He could go back to the country he was born in and live like a king. It doesn't matter whether, anywhere, anywhere in the world, would be fine. I don't, I don't, I don't like. The amount of times that you're saying that you can go back where he came from, Dan. That's not very, <laughs> it's not very globalist of you. <laughs> oh, God. Coming over here, earning our millions. <laughs> Coming over here, living like kings after earning a fortune, <laughs> playing goalie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear me! I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a video of me crying on Twitter tomorrow that Sarah's <laughs> taken, saying I'm being bullied by Will. Can I please go to the uh, the Batman premiere in 2021? <laughs> 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 Who? It's it's Robert Pattinson. It's gonna be Batman, isn't he? Yeah, great choice. He's a fucking good actor. He's a really good actor. Have you have you watched The King yet? No, not yet. If I could just go off topic, my well, topic for fuck's sake. This whole podcast has been what, off the rails what like, topic? from the get-go. What topic, Dad? Yeah. Unless, unless you're, if you're not talking about me and Lucic, then you're off topic. So, yeah. Fair point. I'm very, very excited for the new Batman film, as I am a huge, huge fan of the Riddler character. And I'm very, very happy that we finally get a Batman film with the Riddler in it. And Andy Serkis is going to play um, Alfred as well, which is good. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I never know what like who is Andy Circus? You know, He's the guy. Okay, no, I, I, I know I know who. Okay, he is. okay, okay. I know I know who he is, but you know what I mean. Like I I can't I don't know what that's gonna look like. 
Well, he's not going to be playing Goll and playing Alfred. He'll be Andy <laughs> Serkis playing Alfred. Is he going to? Is he just going to be Ulysses Claw playing Alfred? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, he's Back a very good Bruce. actor. He's a Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> what we're gonna fucking do, mate? <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean. Like he's such a. There's no when Michael Caine was announced as Alfred. You know, you know you're gonna get you know, you're fucking Bruce here, mate. You you were only supposed to blow the bloody doors off, weren't you? You knew what you were getting if it was announced as like. Well, that's why it's interesting. Ja- though. James Corden as Alfred. If you're like, <laughs> oh, oh, bro, oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I haven't got a good James Corden accent as I'm not predestined to basically become James Corden as I am Michael Caine. But yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I'd, what's what is Andy Serkis going to be as Alfred? I don't know, but that's why that's why I think it's a good casting. I think I mean it's intrigued me to see that how he does. How doesn't he make that a good role. casting though if you don't if you can't envisage that actor as the role. Did you envision Heath Ledger as the Joker? No. Nobody did. Nobody knew what they were going to get. Everyone laughed at it. Everyone said it was a terrible idea and a terrible decision. And that's what we got. But Some what, things fit. I get it. Cost? Michael Caine as Alfred fits. That's a perfect casting. I get it straight away. I know what I'm going to get. Andy Serkis? I don't know what I'm going to get. But I'm intrigued by it. I like him. I think he's a good actor. I like d- Robin Pattinson playing Batman. I don't quite know what I'm going to get. But... I'm intrigued. I think it's a good choice and he's a good actor. I, st- I still wanted to see more of um, Ben Affleck and Jeremy Irons, though. Yeah. Like, what happened? I, I get I get Ben Affleck was like, now, nah, fuck this, see you later. But what happened to Jeremy Irons? Why did Jeremy Irons get left by the wayside? I think because once you've decided that's it, we're going a different way, everything just gets, everything, everyone just gets kicked out, don't they? Yeah, I know what you it's mean. Like, it's, it's a bit more it's of like a glaring difference. <laughs> yeah, they're all squatting in that film. And the uh, the Rosers have turned up and said, "Right, that's it. Fuck off." <laughs> well, okay, go live somewhere else. Okay, so, Wait, that's so, a go. So you were likening Jeremy Irons to a, a, a crusty hippie? Yes. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. It's still a bit a bit disgraceful yeah. that. Wait, is it? Where is Andy Serkis from? Is he English? Yeah, he's English. Oh, fair enough. Then. That's fine then. Wow. Okay. What do you mean? What do you mean? Wow. Well, I was just going to say, like, you know, you're you're accusing me of certain things and now you're saying that when you thought he wasn't English, he then couldn't play an Englishman. That's interesting. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying, traditionally, butlers... Oh, tra- oh sorry, sorry. tradition now. Okay, yeah. Tra- traditionally. Talk about, talk about tradition, I will. Do you want to mention the war by any chance or, you know... All I've got to say, Dan, is two world wars and one world cup. Is that <laughs> such a crime? <laughs> Is it a crime oh, to have you know. a bulldog with a Union Jack on it tattooed on my, on my stomach while <laughs> yeah. I prance around Costa del Sol? With a chip butty. With her demanding a pint of Stella Artois. <laughs> demanding one. <coughs> yeah, I must say thank you for letting me look at your um, honeymoon pictures as well. Though. They're really good. <laughs> Two more very small things. You wanted to discuss the uh, the Winter Classic jerseys? Oh, shit, yeah, I did. See, have, have you seen these jerseys, Dan? Yes, and I'm intrigued now because I know, I just know, without even knowing what you're going to say, that we're just going to disagree violently. I just I can just see it coming a mile off. <sighs> like, we, we probably will, but I'm also going to flip-flop on my opinion of these, at least one of these jerseys throughout this conversation. I'll start with the easy one. Uh, Predators one, a little bit shit, but it's not that shit. Whatever. It's it's bad in the sense that it's boring. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. It's not. It's there's nothing like particularly hateable about it, but it's just a bit shit. The stars one. I feel like the more I look at it, the more I kind of dislike it. I love it. I think it's great. This is it. Like when I first saw it, I was like, "Fucking yes, get me one of those." I keep looking at it. I keep looking at it, and it's a little bit boring. It's a little bit boring. It's a little bit shit. I like it. I like. I like the. I like the retro. I like the retroness of it. So okay. So that's. I'm glad you brought that word up. I'm really glad you brought retro up. 
how do you feel about retro looks for teams that have the oldest of the two has been around since less time than I have? Noted with I'm not saying the team I'm not saying the team have to be I'm not saying the team have to be retro. The design is retro. Not for the team, but it's a retro design. Well okay, so so, so the thing that I've been thinking about since since both these jerseys have been revealed, specifically the stars one. Yeah. What why is the Winter Classic so beholden to hockey before nineteen seventy? I don't know. I believe that's a question for Mr G. Batman. No, but it, come on, come on, you're a man of many opinions. Don't fucking don't leave me high and dry now. Where where in the small print of the Winter Classic does it say there has to be like we're fucking obsessed. We're absolutely like the the league as a whole has a fucking rock on for old time hockey. Like what are we doing messing around pretending I'll, these teams are older than they are? Why are we why are we I'll, so obsessed with say, the history? I was gonna say this is one of those occasions where I'm still not sure you've ever seen hockey or know anything about it. And you were saying to me, <laughs> why why does the league have an obsession with old-timey retroness? And I'm like, well, well, we've just spent, like, we just eviscerated Milan Lucic, who was not eviscerated in the media for punching a man in the face because that's what the old-timers used to do. And you're wondering why the league has, like, an obsession with it because that's the NHL. That that's that's they they seem to hold like it's all these it's like these traditional things in it anything to do with tradition old timeliness they fucking love it they love it. If it was me, if it was me, the the stars jersey would have had an LED display on the back to really to really bring it into the twenty first century. <laughs> Holographic. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, and the Preds one would have been a hologram with all like dead performers on the back. So like Whitney Houston, B.I.G., Michael Jackson, <laughs> um, Elvis, you know, the, other, the two of the Beatles, like John Lennon, you know, like, that's you, what I would have done for the uh, for the Preds jerseys. You, you know those Christmas jumpers you can get now where like there's a pocket for your phone and you like play it, yeah, yeah. Know, like a, a, a video of a roaring fire. Yeah, that yeah. For, for a jersey. <laughs> it's just like... <coughs> Especially with these two teams, it's nodding to a history that doesn't exist. Like, it's not the Heritage Classic, it's the Winter Classic. And that's just... I don't, I don't hate the Stars jersey. I, I quite like it. I feel like the jersey itself could do with more than two colours. Because, again, the more I look at it, the more I think, eh, it's just a bit fucking boring, isn't it? I don't know. I can't. I can't quite vocalise exactly how I feel about it, but it's just a, an element of, you know, the fr- the Predators aren't the Dixie Flyers and the Stars aren't the Dallas Texans of nineteen seventeen. So what are we? What are we doing here? Who designs the jerseys? Like, that's the thing. It's, it's not the teams. It's, it's Adidas in conjunction with the league. Yeah, but they must have a. I mean, do they employ a particular person for these jerseys, or do they get like an outside agency in who, like, you know, yeah, it's, this it's, is what we want this year, kind of thing? His name's Michael. Um, he does all the jerseys. Temp. He's a temp. He's, yeah, yeah. He's just he's just about. He's just around. Yeah, I don't think he takes salary. You might might get paid in tickets here or there. Exposure. Paid in exposure. Paid, paid in exposure. Maybe he came from Mitch Marner's temp agency from the summer. <laughs> do you remember that? Uh, <laughs> No, but I'm sure it was a great joke that we had at the time. It was at the time, it was a killer. Absolute killer, absolute world-class Hall of Fame joke. <laughs> yeah. It's a problem where you make so many funny jokes on a weekly basis, Dan, that you just can't remember them all. That is, that is a problem, Will. We're too funny. That, <laughs> that is the issue. We really are. <laughs> all right, let's get out of the fucking... All right, one more thing and get out of this. All right, all right. <laughs> Man versus eight-year-old. Hey, Will, you schmuck. You're going to get roasted by an eight-year-old, you fool. Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't want to know, because I know I'm losing, because you fucking rig it. Like, the, the problem with this whole thing, Dan, this whole thing, go back years now, back to Man vs. Machine. You know what? You've been proper You've been proper on one tonight. You can tell your flooring's fucked at your new house, because you've been on a proper one tonight, you are. I mean, is it is it related <laughs> to the now... 
three and a half beverages I've consumed in this evening. Who's to say? Who is to say whether that's linked to how much of one I am on? But <laughs> <laughs> there's no. Where's the proof, Dan? Where's the proof? Why would I lie? Why would I care? Because you're a fucking piece of shit. That's why you'd fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> this this whole All podcast right. was set up to make me look like a dickhead, and <laughs> right. While I can't disagree with your assessment of me, and I won't. <laughs> in regards to this, I don't care enough to rig it. <laughs> I just, I genuinely don't care. That's what a man who so would cover up how much he cares would say. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right then. All right then. Going forward, going forward, would you like me to just read out George's picks as well? Uh, no, I'm not that interested. I just want to have a go. You fucking wanker! All right, I, 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 I'll, I'll be <coughs> completely transparent here in the name of transparency. I did say to Grace while we were discussing the uh, carpets, which we won't mention. I said I'm in such a mood that Dan's going to fucking get it tonight, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> This is how friendships are really made. Just by having to take <laughs> taking out your anger on each other. Yeah. If you can't call your mate a cunt and still be friends with him, is he even your mate? Well, no, of course not. Who's? I, I haven't met any people like that, so exactly. I wouldn't know. All right. Well, luckily for you this week, Will, as, as we mentioned a few weeks ago, but I forgot to do it, I asked Georgia after her picks why she picked those teams. Ooh, so for nice. this week, I will give you the team she's chosen and the reason she picked them. But you are currently down 11-10, so yes, for the first time this season you have fallen behind. Funny funny that, and, so, and I will stay behind until the end of the season, with no uh, with no pictorial evidence of uh, George's picks. But it's all legit. You don't, you don't have to swear to me, Dan. You don't have to swear to me. You have to swear to the okay. listeners out there that you've deceived for two and a half seasons worth of podcast. How dare you? I have never done that. Anyway... It's currently 11 to 10 to Georgia. So, uh, this week's games, right. Islanders, Panthers. Islanders. Sens, Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Sharks, Preds. Preds. Jets, Stars. You should not be allowed to like have the Stars in any of these predictions, because that just... <sighs> oh. They're, they're the ones that I can't not think about because I know too much about them. You know what I mean? Like, I know that the, yeah, Je- yeah, know. the, the, the Jets have been an absolute boogeyman for the Stars ever since I started supporting them. Um, the Stars. Coyote's Wild. Yotes. Okay, so she picked the Islanders because islands are big. Yeah. She picked can't, the Hurricanes. Can't that. Yeah, she picked the Hurricanes because they can swoosh people up into the air. <laughs> yeah, Again, truth. She's, she's not she wrong. Picked, no. She picked the Preds because there are more predators in the world than there are sharks. Oh, she's got the logic down, you know, down pat, really, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. So for the first three, you picked the same. but now, Okay, so you picked these two different. Uh, she picked the Jets because they can fly fast. I mean, she doesn't really understand. If 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 she's implying that jets fly faster than stars, you need to get her astronomy a bit more up to speed. And then uh, coyotes wild. She picked the wild because she said they can chew the coyotes and eat them. Make of that what you will. Well, it's a it's a jungle out there, Dan. There is a jungle out there. Fuck out, fuck it. This show's been a jungle. Jesus Christ. All right. I feel like this has been the most nonsense show we've done. And that's quite impressive considering we did a show all of, what, six weeks ago, generally centred around ball semen. You'll never forget that, will you? Never, never. <laughs> Cr- crowning achievement of our lifetime. That was amazing. That was amazing. All right, fucking let's get out of here. All right. Thank you for listening, folks. Um, yeah, Will, any last words? Uh, no. Alright, nice one. Take care, folks. We'll see you later. Bye. Peace.